What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and this one is going to be an Escalade video. So today we are installing the Red Arc Tow Pro remote mount, little knob mount, whatever you want to call it, trailer brake controller. That way when we're towing to the track with this thing or wherever we're towing with this thing, we can have control of the trailer brakes on the car, on the truck. So let me give you a little rundown of how this thing works and then we're going to figure out how to install it. So to start we have the Red Arc brake controller. This is the Red Arc Liberty, so it's for one to two axle trailers. This is the remote mount module. We have the cable to go from the module to the button, which this is the button assembly right here. And this guy mounts into the dash and then you have your control knob button that attaches to that. So I should make a disclaimer right now that while this is a very nice brake controller, it doesn't come with a very important part wiring so on the side of the brake controller there are some ports here and i guess if you really wanted to make some crimp connects you could come off of that they tell you the diagram they basically give you how to do it or you can order the one that's specific to your vehicle so in this case i got the wire adapter that plugs right in to the escalade suburban yukon etc etc fuse block so or distribution or junction box whatever you want to call it so we're going to start by pulling off the lower dash piece my thought process is mounting the button back in here so it's somewhere where it's like out of the way but also still reachable uh, if i have to reach it so we've got to pop this leather panel off there's some clips around here and once the leather panel is off there are some uh t15 screws down in here so let me uh get this panel popped off and we'll see what we're working with on the inside i wrapped the tip of a screwdriver because this is like soft touch leather so i wrapped the tip of a screwdriver in some painter's tape just to get behind here and just to get it started if you have a trim removal tool like a plastic trim removal tool that would be a useful tool here but i popped the first two and let's see if i can get the others this might require two hands i to be honest with you guys, pulling plastic parts off of interior with these kinds of clips is always really stressful for some reason. Um, so we got that off. This is where our inside fuse block is right there. We got some spares. So we're going to put this guy just aside for right now. And then we have some T15s. Looks like one, two. Two T15s we got to pop off. And then from there, I think it's just clips on the bottom and the top. So let me get these guys unscrewed. Second one is out. And then you have a little clip right here. You just want to pop that guy up and off. And then I believe across the bottom, we're just going to have, oh, there's another T15 down here. But I don't actually think we have to go down that far. So up top here, there are some clips that you're just going to want to get underneath the dash panel and pry it down. So I'm gonna do it with two hands so I can do it carefully and we'll get this thing hanging. So I lied, you have to take the one that's like right here and the one that's like an inch over from the hood release. And then as you can see here, we have some residual, if you guys saw in the last video, all that armor all they put on, got some residual armor all. And then I just start going across the dash panel, working my way down, you wanna be sure to unplug the wiring harnesses that are attached to here as well that way it doesn't get too hung up so you just got that top one right there and then up here that's our last one there we go there's our there's our kick panel so now that the kick panel is off we have access to everything going on down here and somewhere around here is probably where we're going to put our brake controller module but up here in the area of our dash this is uh in here is where we're going to be putting our button because you can actually get access up behind here with the um with the button itself so you can get up behind this panel so let me figure out where i gotta drill this hole and then we'll start drilling this part is a little nerve wracking. You're gonna take a 3 8 drill bit and you're gonna drill right into the 
the dash of your Cadillac es of your Cadillac Escalade. It's really tough to get the camera in here. I'll back it out. Okay, so we got our hole. Put that down, and basically, we're gonna clean it up. Just get any of the residuals out of there. And we have our 3 8 inch hole. Now, your brake control module has a little LED light at the top. All right, you see that guy right there? That's your LED light. So we need to make a little hole for that. Now we have our locator, which is the little nut that screws on these threads. And around our, no our locator, we got this guy right here. So with that, I'm gonna find a drill bit that is of the proper size. I wanna say maybe like a, something small. Yeah, we'll go with like an eighth inch drill bit but I'll take something smaller to mark a hole and I'm going to use that hole to then just drill an eighth inch hole right above the whole thing. So I'm gonna use the locator, make sure it's straight up and down. There's gonna be a two hand process and then poke a spot, remove it and drill an eighth inch hole. So I use that 1 16th drill bit to mark a hole. I'm gonna remove it and then I'm gonna take a 1 8th drill bit and drill that hole ultimately right above our main hole right there. And then we should be able to put the, uh, the control knob in. As you can see down in here, I have myself a hole. I have myself an LED hole and we should have no issue now getting this guy in through the back so next one i'm going to show you guys is the cable itself now the cable has a 90 degree end and a straight on end so you have options as far as you know how much space you have i think we're going to go with the straight end depending on let me if i feel around back here i think i have enough room that if i go with the straight on option it shouldn't be an issue Hey, you know what, now we're gonna go, there's something that's greasy back there. We're gonna go with the 90 degree option. So I'm gonna undo this, these ties. I'm gonna put our little 90 degree cable into our switch. And then we're gonna go ahead and try and feed that thing up from behind and get this locator uh, all installed with it. So I ended up going with the straight, <laughs> but basically here I am poking through here. Now I'm gonna just put our gray little locator washer on there and then our nut on there. We got it threaded. You're gonna take a 12 mil. You're just gonna snug that up by hand. You don't wanna go too wild on it, crack any of the plastic or break anything. I had to enlarge the holes just a little bit because the LED little backer plate here has to like pop into that top hole. So that's, it has to be aligned basically. So I had to enlarge the hole a tad with like the next drill bit size up from an eighth and three eighths. And uh, we're pretty much good there. It's snug enough. And uh, now we get to move to the next part of, well, first off, let's at least get the button on. So once we're in, we're gonna, you're gonna spin it all the way counterclockwise and you're gonna press the knob on in the zero position. So then you can see it'll go up to 10 and back down to zero like so. So let's move down below now and we'll get the module itself wired in and finalized. So now that we have the 90 degree side hanging down here, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna plug that in to the controller unit. Um, go in, I think like so, yeah. Okay, got it plugged into the unit. Next, we have our custom harness here that is meant for a Chevy Cadillac GMC. We're gonna go under the dash and we're gonna plug this in first and then we're gonna find out where it lands it and then we'll find a good home under here for it. So getting up under here, this is a fuse box. And this fuse box is where we're gonna be digging for our plug. Now there's a tab on the driver's side up top that you just gotta push in and pull forward. And then there are 
I think two tabs on the passenger side, on the right side of it, that you have to also undo. I'm just trying to feel around for them. I will say, it is a little tight in here. They got a lot going on. There we go. All right, so. We will finesse this guy down and out of here. sweep it to the right that'll give you enough room and then we got to come up and find our plug our plug is right here above this big plug spot here so we're going to take the white end the clip side is going to be facing out and we're gonna get her up in there in I think we're good yep just like that we are plugged in all right so from there this tells you how much room we basically have to work with but I can at least plug it into our module like so all right so now we just have to find a home for this and this guy can just get zip tied wherever we're gonna put it. So they left you these slots here to run some zip ties through. So let's see up in here where the best place will be. Before we move further, if you just press, since we have both sides plugged in, if you just press here and you get yourself a nice little blue glow on the light, that'll let you know that we're all wired up properly. So there we go, we got ourselves a little glow. So that means it works. So now we'll find a home for it. So with the fuse box back in place, your cable is just gonna come out over the top of it. And then we're gonna zip, zip tie this guy up out of the way, but we have it come back here. And then right to this bar here is where I zip tied the brake controller to. And you wanna have it somewhere where it can't really move much. So, because once it's calibrated, it's fixed. So you wanna make sure that you get those, those zip ties really tight where you put them. Uh, in this case, these guys are pretty tight. There is not much movement to be had here. So that is it right there. That's where we're gonna keep it mounted and it should clear behind our leather panel, uh, kick panel here. So now what I'm gonna do is throw a zip tie up under here just to hold this up to some other wires. And then we're gonna get our leather kick panel back on and we should be able to button this thing up and take it out to calibrate. So with that, I started the escalate up here and we have our trailer brake controller down there now this thing has to be calibrated to know the position that the um, brake controller is kind of oriented in so it has an active calibration so basically if i just go drive this around normally it will it'll work it'll basically figure itself out it'll calibrate itself and according to the directions um, active calibration will basically consistently monitor the vehicle's directing a direction of travel and allows it to learn continuously uh, to confirm its mounting orientation. So it, it occurs with or without a trailer attached. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit of Escalade content for you guys, but we have to do it anyways because we got it. Like I said in the last video of this thing, we trying to set it up to be a good tow vehicle, reliable, and just be all around good. So if you're an Escalade owner, a Yukon owner, um, a Suburban owner, I think Yukons and Suburbans honestly come with brake controllers in them, but for some reason they decided to leave it out for the Escalade. It's almost like you're not supposed to be telling with these things, but the same truck, it's just a fancy Chevy. So those of you guys with Escalades looking to put a Red Arc Liberty uh, into your truck to tow and have brake controller and not have any kind of bulky brake controller, I hope you found this video helpful, but in the meantime, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.